Hello, this is John Spielman with my video version of my latest column, which is coming out on Sunday, August the 21st. It's Saturday, August the 20th as I do this. And I'm just going to check, the screen will go a bit funny for a moment, that I am recording. Because if I'm not, there's no point. And I am recording. Jolly good. So I called this column the Ubiquitous Bayonet. And... I started off by saying that when I was a kid, so it's many years ago now, and getting established as a chess player, people knew that I liked pushing my rooks pawns. I really liked it. And this is partly perhaps an homage to Bent Larson, because I read and reread one of his best game books many times, and he loved pushing his rooks pawns, and I liked it as well. And then, of course, much, much more recently, our Lord and Master Alpha Zero adores pushing rooks pawns. And I was very pleased when this happened. I thought, yes, that's validated uh, what I was doing. So um, then I said, well, but knight's pawns I didn't push in very often. Certainly not in front of my king or near my king. I, I just didn't do it. And then I said, well, of course there are... Well, there's, the, there's this the Yugoslav attack against the dragon where you often play g4 as white. There's the Benko Gambit, but that's nothing to do with attacking. It's a positional assault on White's Queen's side. It's not an attacking move as such, or not a, an attack against a king. And did I mention anything else? Um, oh, I mentioned the Semi-Slav, the G4 against the Semi-Slav, and it's played against the Reti, and it's played in every position man can think of nowadays, really. So then, um, well, I said that I, when I, every time I watch Shakri and Amadiarov, I, I mean, I'm not a betting man, so I don't really do this, but I th almost have a bet with myself as to what move he'll play G4 on, because he plays it so often. And so then I've got some games, really, uh, featuring what I've called a bayonet, G2 to G4, and also one from the British Championship with G7 to G5, which also can be fun. And, um, right, so I'm going to start got four games they're in chess space and i'm starting with the stem game of the Kerry's attack which was Kerry's against bogle yubov salzburg in fact it was 1943 so it was when he was playing in the war years in nazi europe Kerry's. uh but there we are it's still a very fine game um and he said he'd had a think and thought why don't i play g4 at once and then he was a bit concerned about d5, but he thought I can play pawn takes pawn and bishop b5 check and that would be fine. He thought about e5 and then e5 and there was some stuff where he was looking at bishop b5 check and knight... Well, I'll show you what he was looking at. Um, he was looking at the, uh, e5 knight to there. We can go check as well. And he thought maybe bishop g5 here would be good, but he didn't actually notice the, the best move, which is knight h7. Knight g4, h3 is indeed a catastrophe total, or close to a catastrophe total for black, but because, I mean, he's going to lose control of f6, isn't he? he if, when he retreats the horse, you're going to take it either way with the bishop and play knight d5, and you're going to be very, very, very happy indeed. So that's a disaster. But knight h7 is a move. Uh, I mean, remember, he's just at the board. He's thinking, can I do this? But actually, they also just go g4, knight, knight f5 at once. Anyway, his opponent, Bogolubov, played knight c6, g5, and he played knight takes d4, which is a bad move. Knight d7, he was worried about knight db5, but in fact, this is not so clear. Um, and... Um, you can't play queen d4, of course, because knight f3 check. Because otherwise you could play queen d4 followed by knight f6 check and bishop b5. So white plays some move and then you play a6 and kick his horse and the game continues. Right, but Boggle Yubov in this stem game took on d4, which is a mistake, because it gives white a lot of space. Keris said, well, if queen b6, I can take it and play knight b5 and I'm almost winning. She probably is already. And he just developed his pieces, played f4. The guy should probably have gone b5. Um, a4, b4, queen b4, rook b8. Well, it's not terribly good. 
is very nice for white. It's one line. You can also maybe play queen a3. He cowed him into playing b6. f5 is a very impressive move, actually. Giving the knight a square, but saying, all right, everything else will be bad about your position. If bishop takes, um, he wanted to go to queen a4 check. There's this line, which is particularly unpleasant. Um, a4, bishop b7, h4, queen c5, queen d2. And here the guy ought to have tried queen b4, definitely. Queen b4, castles are strong, but then rook f8 apparently might be sort of pliable. He didn't give rook f8. What actually happened was that they played these moves. And White's just got a big lead in development. If long castles, you play queen e3 and win a pawn at least. And the position's pretty disgusting for black. Uh, he went rook takes, rook takes, bishop d8, which is a miserable move. Queen f4, threatened to go to f8, knight g6, queen g4. It's just horrific. e5, bishop e3, he tried. Bishop c7, take knight f4. Check is a big check. It messes black up completely. And on they went. King d8, I suppose. I haven't even really thought about it. Well, he could go. Anything you like, probably. Knight d5 must be strong for one thing. What, what, what do you say? King d8, what is the best way to do it? I haven't got the book in front of me. I said I used, um, I've got Harry Weld Gollenbeck's three volumes on um, Kerry's, which is a lovely book, which I lost for a while, and then I was able to retrieve due to somebody's generosity, which is lovely. Uh, it got misplaced at one point, which I was very cross about at the time. Um, I think of King d8, probably just Knight d5 is completely winning. Um, I'm just asking. It's great and glorious majesty what it wants to do, I think, probably knight d5. And yeah. Well, rook takes f4 simply, actually, is completely winning. Knight d5 is not as good a move. I mean, knight d5 you can take and you can con continue, the, continue the game a little bit. This is not completely over, but it is. Anyway, um, so he won in a couple more moves. Queen f5 here, check here, check here, knight d5 resigns. A complete slaughter and a great debut for the Kerry's attack against the Skaveningen. Uh, so it's against the Pierce Skaveningen move order. And let me just go to the top. Can I go page up? I forget. Well, that, that will get up me to the top. So this is basically against this move order that g4 is pl very particularly good. I mean, I think, you know, black does have ways to play this position, but they're difficult. Um, I would, in a way, I'd like to learn how to do this as black. I mean, I never played any of these. I think I used to, I played some blitz games with John Nunn once, and I didn't do very well. I mean, I swindled him quite often because, you know, as you do it being blitz games, but it wasn't great. Uh... But he certainly played g4 against me. Um, and, um, yeah, so that was the stem game for that. Then the next one we got sure of years and years later. So we're nearly 50 years later. Alexei Shirov and Alex Shabalov apparently were listening to pop music and little moving chess pieces around the board, as you do if you're chess players. And they thought... At some point, they thought of the move g4 against in the semi-Slav Merini position. Um, and they played, he played this. Shirov introduced it. He played, uh, he gives the first three games. Of course, there have been thousands of games now in this. He mentions the first three in Far on Board, which I also consulted. And, um, okay. h3, I'm sure, is a move. In Far on Board, Shirov mentioned that the next two games that were played in this line were his own game with Vladimir um, Akapian. I'm just changing from a Valdimir to a Vladimir, as one does. And um, also there was Adams against uh, Kasparov. So those were the next two games. Um, and... D takes c4. This is the Adams game. Just 
topics before, um, what happened in the Kasparov game. Um, it didn't go well for... Have I got, have I got the... Yeah, I, I've got this game of Mickey's where he got beaten by Kasparov. It just didn't go well. Okay, I mean, you know, you're playing Kasparov, it's a random position. Things are going to often not going to go your way. And they didn't in this case. I mean, Mickey just got beaten up. And then the other game that was played was um, this game, Shirov against Stakapian, where he also got a lot of play. Terrific play, and he won eventually. I don't know how good it was. Anyway, in this game, after G4 novelty... Um, Thrustor Torhalsson had to decide what to do. He castled, in fact, which is... And this is what happened. This is the moves that were played. F5, takes, takes. Turns out not to be a great way to play, but, I mean, God knows, you're, you're trying to make up a line that you think is playable in a completely unknown position, or a position totally unknown to you. Of course... Shirov would not have retreated this knight in this world or in the next. Bishop b4. He played well, actually, Torhaus, and he fought very hard. But actually, this position, it turns out, is very bad for black. Um, the engine is very definitive about that. Um, Queen h8 check. I mean, actually, I'm not sure if even if Queen h8 check is the best move, but it's a good move, of course. And they fight. Um, White's lost a piece, but he has all the players and it's a very dangerous attack. Shirov claimed, uh, praised Torhausen for how well he defended against this assault. King b1 apparently is the best move now, which is not obvious to... Just, just, to, just to be able to take and play f5 without a2 or something. Apparently that's very good indeed. In fact, Shirov played this. And I think the game was unclear for a couple of moves. Queen f2... E7's king to their takes takes is pretty unclear. Black's got some squares, so you, you, do, you don't want to cash in too early. F3, rook E4 was a mistake, apparently. Uh, Queen C5, king to their... This apparently is just winning, really. Well, you can see it's winning, it's mate. Um, but, I mean, again, it's a really difficult position. Here, um, rook G2 played... Apparently, Queen H6 check is okay at this stage. Uh, well, at least it's unclear. Uh, oh, is this? No, this is winning for white, but it's terribly, terribly complicated. And you could easily go wrong. What actually happened was rookie four, I think, is a mistake. Um, no, no, so this is okay. There was some moment I thought... No, oh, no, I know, I've, I'm confusing this in the next game, I'm sorry. And eventually he won. Okay, this was a big scramble, and after Queen E7 it was checkmate. D7 had also been totally winning, obviously. So, I mean, a very hard game indeed. And a brilliant victory for Shirov, and the start of a story which... If we look now, I'm just going to go re replay uh, reference database, and we've got sort of a thousand sixteen hundred, about sixteen hundred and fifty games or something with G4. If I go back a move, that was just um, sixteen ninety. Okay, I was just totting up in my head gently. So that that also is a ver is now mainline theory. I'm not sure. I, they don't seem quite to know what to do against it still. I mean, I see games, I was just looking for the top-level games, and people are still winning as white sometimes, it's just a battle. Um, right, then we, I, here I've got a random blitz game by, by Shaq, just showing you a position in which he played G4 as he would. He played G4 in this position, apparently this has never been done otherwise. Knight takes G4, root G1, F5. H3 and knight e5. Apparently it's quite good for white according to my engine. Obviously you have a lot of play. D takes c4, bishop takes c4. Our lord and master likes knight d5 immediately. 
uh, sorry, that's not bishop d5, but knight d5, obviously. And apparently this is not quite working, but I mean, so what? Good idea in a in a blitz game. Very, very hackety. Um, probably he could have taken in g3 and gone queen c7, it would have been okay. Round about here it's good for white. Uh, but he does lose control for a move, actually, interestingly. Check takes takes here. Uh, rookie eight is a mistake, it turns out. Along a lot of checks. Um, what should you play in this position? Um, I'm going to ask again. I'll ask Houdini, I'll do. Uh, rook d1. Uh, because here, 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 in the splits game, he missed bishop e4 check, as you would. Check here, check here, and take the rook. But okay, a nice random game. He blocks, and it's the end of the game. So, but this is just, really it was just an illustration of the positions in which they'll play g4, which is anywhere. And okay, this is a blitz game, so of course Shaq will play g4 in any position known to man. But it's still different from in in my day. I mean, I you know, I played lots of blitz when I was a kid, and I don't think I often played g4. I often, often, often played h4, but not very often g4. Anyway, that's that game, and I'm finishing with a game by Richard Pert from the British Championship. And this is just an example. Um, I gave this in my um, Observer column, and I don't want to be unkind to White, because White is a perfectly decent player, probably rated about 2,000, 2,100, facing an IM. He plays a couple of moves, and then he gets punched in the gut on move three, which is extraordinary. So he's gone knight of three, d5. I don't normally go c4 myself, because I don't like placing d4. He plays b4, which is one of the main lines, and he gets hit by g5. So I thought, well, Mamadiarov must have played this. Actually, he hasn't. But then I found gains by David Navara, by Alexander Morozevich, by Jeffrey Cheong. And, I mean, yeah, they're mostly blitz games, and some of them are very, very random indeed. But it is just a lot of fun. And you imagine you're poddling along as white, you played b4, you think you know something about this position presumably he plays g5 you're on your own you're play you're facing an im and you're not remotely of im strength yourself and it's just horrible a horrible way to f for things to develop and the outcome was absolutely ghastly i mean i'm going to so he played knight g5 which is a mistake um if bishop b2 you just go bishop g7 if you take now you should go h3 anyway if you take here, 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 then, for instance, knight c5 is what you're supposed to do, and black gets lots of play. But, for instance, if knight g3, knight f6, then already my engine is just saying black has too much play, which is, you know, not obvious to... I suppose you're playing f4 in a minute, and it's just horrible. Horrible, horrible, horrible. You maybe have knight h5, but black's got too many pieces out too quickly. It's just not what you want from a game of chess at all. So, um, I mean, that's not obvious to me, but if I'm told that it's good, good for black, I certainly can believe it. Actually, I will just add the kibitzer. Uh, I will add a kibitzer stockfish 15. And I'm going to play e4 was suggested. If e3 castles... I wanted to try knight h5 maybe now, or... Knight h5, what's going to happen? Knight takes, queen takes, knight c6, and it's just saying splat, basically. Knight c6, I suppose a3, and now bishop b6. And you just look at this position, and white has one extra pawn, and black has 53 tempi. And it is a horrific position for white. So, um, I mean, apparently e4 is the best move, I know. Uh, it said, I know that it was wanted to go e4, and then I think you just take it, and obviously you are much better. Um, and we'll we'll give it a line over plus. Did I? Didn't I? 
sorry, that's not worth my equals sign. Do, 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 do. Equals line over plus. Okay, so he's got hit in the guts of move three. He took six minutes. He patched, he played knight g5, e5, knight e4, d. I mean, d3 is a sensible thing to do. The guy gets his. You can go queen g5 as well if you want to. Uh, I had some r ridiculous game. Um, I think I found a ridiculous game as with this as well. Um, and, you know, I mean, it's just it's not fun. So bishop b4 takes the pawn back. Check is not a particularly good idea. I and mean, the thing is that White thinks he needs to justify his play, and his play isn't justifiable. And the more he does, the worse it gets. This doesn't look like a great move. Should play f3 so the knight can go back to f2, but it's not good. Castle's long. It's f5. If you're going to play h4, you ought to do it now, but your position's disgusting anyway. Um, knight c2. Takes, takes. Knight f6. Rook f3 to stop e4, I suppose. I mean, the thing is, the black isn't even a pawn down in this position. He's actually got equal material. And the bishop on f1 is not a happy prelate. It really isn't a happy bunny when it's got no squares. If you took the two bishops off the board, the position would be unclear, I suppose. Well, I mean, f5 would be loose and, you know, it would just be a game. But um, as it is, this is actually almost lost. And here your guy played a losing move, h4. And this weakens g3. And black simply plays f4. If h5, you just take the knight, recapture... Presumably rooks are exchanged. Maybe white tries to go king d2 and e3 and get his bishop out. But, I mean, you can play sort of rook h2 and stop that. And white's position is utterly horrific. Um, you know, you've hardly, you've got no way to get any, you any pieces working at all. Probably black could play g5 himself. Um, and maybe tee up to play knight at takes a knight f4 or something. There's no play for white on the queen side, and it's just going to be lost after a while. I mean, I understand white will find some way to cause a tiny, tiny bit of trouble somehow, but it shouldn't be. What actually happened was he played knight e4. Of course, you take with the bishop. Knight h5. If you wait one more move, black will play knight g3, and then he will decide how to win. I mean, you could... Um, there are a couple of ways. I mean, one is to play b6 and a5. Double your rooks in the h file. Uh, or probably not a5, actually. Play b6. Double your rooks in the h file. Take the h pawn. Uh, and play rook h1. And win the bishop. Another way would be, I suppose, to arrange to play... Just close the king side and arrange to exchange rooks on the queen side, and then somehow something awful will happen. Anyway, he tried g4, but I mean, it's just not worth. And now just rook a6, and the poor man resigned. And I presume it was a great relief to resign. And so this is one of the most awful, horrible games I've ever seen for white is white, and not in no way a reflection on white's strength. White obviously... Is a decentish player who got hit very, very hard, very, very early, and just couldn't cope at all. And who would have been able to cope in this position? I mean, you're being thumped by a much stronger player in in a in a way that you can't cope with. But I did think G5 was a really great opening idea, uh, which I hadn't seen before. And, and, you know, I shown it to some people and said, what did black play? And even quite hackety people who I teach have taken a little while to think of playing g5. Uh, because the thing is that actually strong players are more hackety than the hackettiest amateurs, really. They just, you know, they will do anything to get going. Right. I hope you've enjoyed this. And minus 23, says Houdini. <laughs> My God. And there we are. Um, I will be back in uh, September, and presumably September the 5th, it looks like. Is that the 4th or the 5th? The 4th. Okay. Well, um, 
have a good time until then. I hope you've enjoyed this, and I'm now signing off. Um, um...